Hey there, guys. It's Saturday morning. This game is a little loud. There's not much I can do about that. As, uh... There's really no options to this. But it's Saturday morning, so you know what time it is. Grab your bowl of cereal, sit right down, because it's Saturday morning. Spook! Yeah, I know. Kind of interesting in intro, isn't it? Alright. Anyways, today's episode we are playing the Yaw... That's that's what I assume it's called. I don't know. I'm trying to pronounce it. I heard about this game through uh, the podcast with Jesse Gox and 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 uh, Dodger and Total Biscuit, those guys, and how it's basically like a choose your own adventure, and it's really great to play with others. Unfortunately, I'm the only one. So, and there's no, like, online multiplayer option on this. So, it's a very simplistic game, but a lot of fun. So, you know what? We're going to play all of them. Just because, you know. Because, <laughs> yeah. The Yogg will be here in six weeks, and no one expects it. Not a one of us. We just keep on living our lives, week by week, unaware. Alright, so I played a little bit of this already, so I kind of have an idea of how everything works. Basically, when you pick a character, you can go from anywhere from the forest, to the arena, to the alchemy tower, gardens, palace, tavern, hospital, and slums. And depending on what you do where, it could affect any of the number of the other areas that are around. That being said, I'm going to take her, I'm going to start her in the arena. I'm going to have her compete in a fight. Spent a week fighting brutes in the arena. You gained two physique and one fi finesse. One night, on your way home, you spot a rusty dagger on the ground. Ah, uh, leave it. The rest of your week is uneventful. The fact that the highlight of your week was spotting a piece of rusty metal makes you a little sad. You lose one mind. So now she's there. So now I got this guy. And we'll have him go to the tavern. And we'll have him drink. You spend the entire week getting wasted. You gain two charm and one physique. One day, while in the tavern, a heated argument erupts between two patrons. Soon enough, fists are flying and everybody seems to be joining in on the violence. Join the fray! You jump in the thick of the fight, let loose some bent up raids and some unsuspecting patrons. You gain one physique from all that exertion. So now we got this other chick. And we'll have her go to the slums. And we'll have her fight crime. You spend the week outsmarting and beating up criminals. You gain one mind, one physique, and one finesse. One night, you hear a woman whisper at you from nearby. Hey, you, she, she calls out, looking to make a bit of coin. Ah, uh, no thanks. Despite your intention to say no, you find yourself giving into her will completely. She sne signals for you to go into the alleyway with her. Come closer, she says. Nobody else can hear what I'm about to tell you. You lean in close, eager to learn how you'll be earning this coin. She presses herself right up against your moving, you, moving her lips slowly towards your ear. Suddenly, she bites your neck viciously. Blood pours from the wound. She clings to you tightly, lapping it all up. You black out. When you come to, you see her standing over you. Thanks, she says, tossing you a couple of coins. You gain one wealth. She then melts into the shadows. When you feel your neck, you notice your wound has completely healed. You have, your body feels ice cold. You gain three charm. You lose three physique. And last but not least, we'll have this guy go to the alchemy tower. And we'll have him clean the lab. You spend the week cleaning up no noxious chemicals. You paid one wealth for your labor and gained one physique and one magic. One day, while in the tower, one of the alchemists asks you to watch his potion while he's out. Soon after he leaves, the potion begins bubbling out of control. If you don't do something soon, it'll explode. Uh, drink it. You quickly drink the potion. Your stomach can't seem to handle the potion. Fire erupts from your esophagus and for a solid minute, you're shooting a jet of fire from between your lips. That burns. You lose two physique. What a learning experience, though. You gain one mind. They say the last thing, time it came, the Yogg devoured houses whole, stole lives, 
tore families and family members apart. But that was so very long ago. Alright, so she was in the arena. Uh, you know, we'll keep her in the arena. We'll have her compete. Spend the week fighting Brutes in the arena. Gain two physique and one finesse. While wandering around the halls between matches, you spot your former lover, Kelly. Didn't know she was a lesbian. But hey, whatever. An awkward exchange happens in which you want to know how they're doing without seeming to care too much. After a few minutes, Jean, one of the most popular fighters in the arena, butts into the conversation. Hey, Kelly. Sorry to interrupt, but we've got to leave right away. If we want to make it to your mother's in time. You say an awkward goodbye as they walk off holding hands. How do you feel? Extremely jealous. Extreme jealousy. You become extremely grumpy for the rest of the week. You lose one charm. While you're no fun to be around, you channel your rage into working out. You gain two physique. Uh, let's, no. Let's have him go to the palace. Uh, no, no. Hospital. Hospital. Tend to patients. You spend the week diagnosing and tending to the sick. You gain two mine and one wealth. One day, you hear spooky sounds echoing through the hospital. Soon afterwards, a glowing blue ghost floats down from the ceiling. She seems to be wandering the halls aimlessly, howling about horrible noises. She doesn't appear to realize that she is freaking everyone out. You decide to do something about it. Uh, talk calmly to the ghost. You approach the spirit and try to explain to her the effect she's having on the sick. She seems to understand what you're telling her and apologizes for bothering everybody. She walks through a wall and is never seen again. A doctor tosses you a sack of coins as a way of saying thanks. You gain two wealth. And we'll have her go to the palace and attend a ball. You spend a week attending fancy gatherings. You gain two charm and one finesse. Over the course of the week, you've noticed your skin become paler and your teeth sharper. You notice that whenever you talk, everyone nearby hangs on your every word. You gain three charm. You also feel more frail and gaunt than you used to. You lose three physique. One day, you notice a woman tilting her head back, brushing her hair. Her neck fully exposed. You can even see a vein or two. Delicious. Before you know it, you're coated in blood with a mangled form in front of you. There are dozens of people around and they're all filled with delicious nectar. The next few hours are a blur. You wake up the next day in bed sheets soaked with blood that is not your own. You look in the mirror and notice your skin has regained its color and that your teeth have dulled. But it looks like the palace is gone now. <laughs> we, we destroyed the palace. Wonderful. Uh, we'll have him actually brew a potion. You spend a week experimenting with different potion brews. You gain two magic and one mind. One day, you hear one alchemist shout, Eureka! You look over to see he, what he's done. You spot a small, previously dead ferret come to life. I figured out the antidote to death, the alchemist exclaims. The undead ferret lets out a horrific noise and lumbers about slowly. Destroy the abomination! You smack the ferret off the counter and stomp on it until it stops twitching. The alchemist is horrified. You gain one physique. It was on us in a heartbeat, or so the stories go. The air shook. The air went still. Week three, we'll have her continue in the arena. Why not compete in, in a fight? You spend a week fighting brutes in the arena. You gain two physique and one finesse. One day, while wandering around the hall, you spot Jean. Punch Jean right in the face. As you walk by, you take a swing. Jean tries to duck, but you're too fast. Your fist connects and knocks several Jean's teeth loose. Your rage ended up severely injuring somebody. You lose one charm and one mind. That was a nice punch, though. You gain two physique and two finesse. Uh, let's have him go back to the tavern and drink. You spend the entire week getting wasted. You gain two charm and one physique. One day, a bard pulls out his lute in the bar and starts playing a tune. Unfortunately, his singing is horrible and it is ruining the tavern's atmosphere. You've decided to do something about it. Convince him to leave. You approach the bar and let him know that the tavern down the road is well known for its big tippers. He thanks you for the heads up, packs up his things, and goes on his way. You helped out the patrons. You gained two charm. We'll have her go to the gardens. Landscape. You spend the week maintaining the plants in the royal garden. You gain one finesse, one physique, and earn yourself one wealth. 
One day, on your way home from the park, you come across a golden ring in the grass. Where the ring? Upon placing the ring on your finger, orange glowing markings appear on the outside of the band. The markings unravel themselves from the ring and swirl in front of you. They form into what appears to be a fully armored ghost radiating a beautiful orange light. The ghost turns to you and nods before walking away. The ring looks good on you. You gain one charm. And we'll have him brew another potion. You spend the week experimenting with different potion brews. You gain two magic and one mind. One day, an artificer stops by for a visit. She is adorned with magical gadgets and gizmos and is followed everywhere by her clockwork spider. The alchemists of the tower all go out of their way to impress the artificer, offering her an array of potions and elixirs. As she's leaving, she adorns the most charming of the alchemists with a special trinket. The fact that she didn't choose you was a very humbling experience. You gain one charm. And then the world was a howling fury. Chaos. Screaming. The sound of all we knew being pulled in half. It's week four. We're going to keep her in the arena, but we'll have her bet on a fight. You spend the week placing bets on your favorite fighters. You gain four wealth. One day, while wandering the halls, one of the arena fighters approaches you. Excuse me, miss, I need a sparring partner, he says. Are you down for a fight or two? Accept his challenge. Let's do this, he screams. He takes a swing at your head. You punch his fist as it's coming towards you. You can hear the bones in the fighter's hand crack. He runs away whimpering. That was pretty cool. You gain one charm. Let's see. Let's go to the... Let's go and fight crime. You spend the week outsmarting and beating up the criminals. You gain one mind, one physique, and one finesse. One day, a woman in a beautiful but tattered dress comes up to you with her hands outstretched. She looks extremely familiar, but you can't figure out, quite figure out, who she reminds you of. Give her some coin. You toss her a sack of coins. You lose one wealth. She thanks you weakly and walks away. The next night, you recognize her on the street. You spot her eating what looks like a fresh loaf of bread. She sees you and smiles. You feel good about yourself. You gain one physique. You gain one finesse. And one mind. And one charm. And one magic. You gain it all. Uh, we'll have her go to the ta tavern and drink. Spend the entire week getting wasted. You gain two charm and one physique. One day, a fortune teller sets up at one of the tavern stables, she offers to read anybody's fortune for a small sum. Yes, please. You spend one wealth. The fortune teller takes your hand and begins showering you with promises of love and wealth. She doesn't really go into any detail, and the whole time, and the whole time, you can't help but feel that this is all an act. Underwhelmed and slightly poor, you can't help but feel like you've wasted your money. The night while walking home, the fortune teller runs up to you and gives you a kiss on the cheek. There's the love part, she says with a toothless smile. Then she hands you a giant sack of gold. There's the wealth, she says. You gain two wealth. Still think I'm a hack? No. Uh, we'll have him go to the hospital and tend to the patients. You spend the week diagnosing and tending to the sick. You gain two mine and earn one wealth. One day, a patient whose voice has been cursed, with, cursed and replaced with piano notes will not stop talking. All the other patients are complaining that his voice is making the hospital even more depressing. The doctors have tried convincing him to stop talking, but to no avail. Sing with him! You start trying to sing along with his voice. You try to sing along with him, but just can't hit the right notes. His sound gets progressively sadder and sadder. It starts driving you slightly mad. You lose one mind. When it arrives this time, how will we fare? Will we once be more rebuild, move on, be strong, or have we forgotten? So, as you can see, the palace is no longer accessible because uh, the chicken red became a vampire. Uh, let's go to the forest, why not? Let's hunt. You spend a week hunting defenseless critters. You gain two finesse and sell the pelts for one wealth. One day, you stumble upon a dryad picking flowers in a field. Upon noticing you, she runs up to you excitedly. Excuse me, miss, would you care to dance, she asks. I've been wanting to dance for so long, but nobody else has been around to dance with me, she sighs. I'd love to dance, she giggles and takes you by the hand. She starts humming out a song, and the two of you dance together in the middle of the forest. 
The two of you have perfect chemistry. All of your movements are perfectly in sync. You dance with her well into the night. Afterwards, she thanks you for the lovely evening with a kiss on the cheek. You feel energy radiate through your body. You gain three charm. Uh, let's have him continue fighting crime. You spend the week outsmarting and beating up criminals. You gain one mind, physique, and finesse. One night, you hear cheering coming from an alleyway. Peering in, you see a crowd of men cheering on dogs, violently ripping each other apart. One of the men spots you and asks, Oi, would you like to participate in our little betting game? Try to stop the dog fights. You try to convince gamblers that dog fighting is wrong. Your natural charm seems to have captivated the group, and they hang on your every word. A few of them start sobbing as you explain to them the horrors of what they've done. They pack up everything, promising you that they'll never do anything like it again. You stop the town's illegal dog fighting. You feel very good about yourself right now. You gain one physique, one finesse, mind, charm, magic. Ah, eh, she's gonna get drunk. You spend the entire week getting wasted. You gain two charm and one physique. One day, the tavern throws the annual dart tournament. Spectate. You watch the tournament from the sidelines, analyzing throwing techniques. You gain one finesse. Uh, attend to the patients. Spend the week diagnosing and tending to the sick. You gain two mine and will earn one wealth. One day, the blood le bloodletting leeches somehow escape from their containers. Leeches start flooding into the hallway. There are people screaming everywhere as leeches slither towards them. Somebody do something, yells one of the doctors. Zap the leeches with magic! You wave your hand, unleashing a wave of magic to disintegrate the leeches. The leeches all poof into dust. You save the hospital with your quick thinking. You gain one mind. The Yog. It's almost here. Almost. Almost. So as you can also see, things start changing like it's all like misty looking. Last week she'll be in the forest. She'll hunt. She spent the week hunting defenseless critters. Two finesse and one whelp. One day you hear hundreds of footsteps rumbling through the forest in your direction. It's an orc raiding party. Oh no. What do you do? Charm them into not killing you. The orcs listen to nothing you say and capture you. In your holding cell, you contemplate the weight of your own mortality. You lose one mind. The next morning, the orcs are all gone and your cell is unlocked. What happened? He'll stay in the slums and fight crime. Yep. One mind with seek, physique and finesse. One night, a small child approaches you with his hands cupped and outstretched towards you. He doesn't say anything, but just looks up at you with wide eyes, expect waiting expectantly. Give him some coin. You toss him a sack of coins, you lose one wealth. He thanks you and walks away. The next night, you recognize him on the street. Spotting, spot him eating what looks like a fresh loaf of bread, he sees you and smiles. You feel good about yourself. One physique, one finesse, one mind, one charm, one magic. She's just gonna drink. Getting wasted, two charm and one physique. One day, an impromptu drinking contest is held. Enter, you down pint up to pint drinking as if your life depended on it. You end up blacking out. When you come to, you find yourself in a home you don't recognize, and only your underwear. Your clothes are nowhere to be found, and you seem to be the only one home. What happened? And we'll have him brew a potion. You spend the week experimenting with different potion brews. You gain two magic in one mind. One day, all the alchemists decide to take a break from work and instead throw a kinship party. An alchemist waves his hands and produces confetti in front of him. Another spawns a seemingly endless number of doves from his sleeves. Then all the alchemists turn to you to see what you can come up with. Complex trick. With a snap of your fingers, you bring a chair to life. You sit atop it and ride it around the room. Everybody else is quite impressed. You gain two charm. Storm arrives in the night. By the morning, it still rages. For three full days, the tempest puts us through a grinder. Drowns us, crushes us, ruins us. But then it ends. We see the graveyard our home has become. Our home. Does anything yet live? Is it? Are we? Past saving. So now that this is where you decide what you're going to be. And depending on how well you think you did... Uh, you pick whatever it is. So for her, I think because she was a bit strong, we'll make her the builder. You take it upon yourself to help rebuild the town by hand. You build homes at breakneck speed, impressing the rest of the survivors. 
This helps rebuild helps rebuilding effort significantly. Since he was really good, I'm gonna make him the leader. Take it upon yourself to be the leader of the survivors. You expertly delegate and prioritize tasks. You give motivating speeches and act as an effective mediator in disputes. This helps the rebuilding effort significantly. Seeing as she didn't do very well, but she has a lot of charm. Maybe she can be a tailor. You volunteer to weave and mend clothing for the survivors to keep warm. You manage to make a pair of socks for every survivor before your stamina gives out. It's not much, but enough to help a small amount. And then him will make him the conjurer. You take it upon yourself to help conjure up supplies for the town. With your magic, you summon supplies of the highest caliber. With little effort, you're summoning high-quality lumber and food from out of nowhere. This helps the rebuilding effort significantly. And so, well, oh, I didn't. We flourished. Towns once wrecked and ravaged rose towards the sky. Trees again took root, then blossomed. We all blossomed. And though it took a long while, and though it took a lot from us, our future is bright. Should the Yogg ever return, we will be ready. So there you have it, guys. That has been that is the Yogg. A little bit strange towards the end there. I kind of with the town rebuilt, you decide to become a full-time arena warrior. You slowly rise the rank, knocking out scores of fighters, even ones as great as Jean the Beautiful. Before long, you become the arena champion. You travel across the world, fighting the very best of the best. Tales are sung far and wide of your mighty feats of strength. The Yogg traumatized you deeply. Despite everything being okay now, something in you snapped. Maybe it was witnessing a baby floating face down in the water. Maybe it was when you found a man skewered on a fence, still squirming slightly, his eyes an empty void. Perhaps it was when you saw a group of kids that were trapped in the school and resorted to eating their rotting teacher's corpse. Wow. Whatever it was, you can't help but drink. You drink so much you're not entirely sure what is real and what's an illusion. One day you look into a mirror and your eyes are empty, hollow. After the town is rebuilt, you take a visit to the palace library. You look for any material regarding the mysterious disease with which that woman infected you with. After a few months of research, you think you've decided you've discovered exactly what you need to do. You whittle yourself a stake and begin scouring the slums, hoping to en enact your revenge. One day, you find a secret passage leading deep into the sewers. With the town fully rebuilt, you spend more and more time in the alchemy tower. Your potion brewing abilities quickly become among the best in the world. Your health and mana potions are considered world-class delicacies, with people venturing far and wide to buy them. But you never learn how to brew a love potion. So as I was saying, there we go, that, is, that has been the Yogg. A little bit of a hiccup there as uh, I was about to read what it was going to say, and then it stopped recording and I had to kind of... Thankfully I didn't lose everything. This is an awesome game. I definitely recommend you guys check it out. There's a whole lot more to it than just that. And of course, you can just start over right from the beginning and do it all over again. But that's it for this week, guys. Hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you and I'll see you next week with another episode of Saturday Morning Spook. And of course, until then, as always, I'll see you guys next time.